morning, Trinity Church. It is Sunday, May the 10th, and I am Lauren, and this is... Elizabeth. <laughs> and we are coming to you from our home here in Stratford, and we are excited to be able to lead you in some worship on this virtual Sunday morning. Um, I know that it is a, an unusual time right now that we're living in, but we are thankful that we have the opportunity to be able to connect this way I know it's not the same as being together, um, gathering together in the same place, but we have the Holy Spirit who joins us together. And so keep that in mind as we, as you listen to this video, be reminded that your brothers and sisters in the Lord are also watching and listening and also worshiping and praising the Lord at the same time. So it's different, but it's still just as wonderful and God loves to hear us worship, whether you're at home or sitting in a church. Um, he inhabits the praises of his people, and we are his people this morning. And so let's keep that in mind as we worship and we, we hear the word that, that God loves us and he's with us through all of this. He is with us and he's faithful. And I just want to read some scripture this morning. I'm reading from the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. When I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots go deep down into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is so great, you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now glory be to God. By his mighty power at work within us, he is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or hope. May he be given glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever through endless ages. Amen. So let's just pray for a minute here. Father, we lift you up. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that joins us together, even though we may be miles apart right now, in all different places scattered around. You are with us, and we thank you for your Spirit that joins us together. You are a good God, and we declare your goodness and your kindness and your love this morning. And we love you, and we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And you are worthy of our praise. You are a holy God. And it is an honor and a privilege to love you and worship you and serve you. And may you be glorified this morning as your church comes together to worship you and adore you. We love you, Jesus. Amen.
faithful you are. Oh, I guess it's time for me to start. Um, it's my time to welcome you to Trinity today. Uh, I was just busy writing a card and listening to the music and singing along with it. Sorry about that. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, I trust that you were blessed by the worship today. Uh, we were reminded of God's faithfulness. Uh, think for a moment. How has God proved himself faithful in these times to you? Think about that. We were also reminded of two other things. We were reminded of who we aren't, of what we aren't, and of what we are. We were reminded that we are no longer slaves to fear. And then we were reminded that we are children of God. And again, think for a moment what that means. We are no longer slaves to fear. We are children, sons and daughters of God. Just think about what that means. Welcome to Trinity Sunday Online. Uh, my name is John and I'm one of the elders at Trinity. Uh, I'd just like to welcome you here today. I have three announcements to share with you. Uh, one I'm going to read a little bit because uh, there's a bit of detail with it. Uh, normally we will be starting the baby bottle drive in support of the KW Pregnancy Resource Center. Uh, the work of the center continues in these days. The period between Mother's Day and Father's Day is a critical fundraising time for the Resource Center. And so we want to encourage you to consider making a special donation to the campaign. You can give by way of text or through Canada Helps, a check or credit card, or an e-transfer. Uh, for more specific details, you can go to pregnancycenter.ca or you can go to our we website and we'll have a link there that will take you to the campaign. So please carefully consider it. It is, it is critical for these days. The second announcement pertains to uh, our Sunday services. The first and third Sundays will now be Zoom Sundays. They will be live the second and fourth will follow a format very similar to today. And if there's a fifth Sunday, who knows yet. So next Sunday, join us for a live Zoom service. Uh, the link will be sent to you through an email and you can also check into the church website. Finally, have you received a card or an email out of the blue? How did it make you feel? How about that phone call from somebody you just you, you hadn't received a phone call and you you got a phone call and and it was somebody who just called to check in to see how you are well how does that make you feel in this present time many people are feeling a sense of isolation or suffering with depression or anxiety or they just need to know that someone cares for them cares enough to do that small special act. So here is my challenge. Pray that God puts the name of one or many people on your mind this week. And when he does, pick up the phone and give them a call and tell them, I, God put your name on my mind and I just wanted to tell you I was thinking about you. Or if you're not comfortable with that, uh, you're more of a card writer then write them a card, put a Bible verse in, tell them you're praying for them and pray for them. And be a source of encouragement for the lonely and the anxious and those who are just feeling so alone right now. They need to know that we're there. And, and I just want to remind you, it's not the job of the elders. It's not the job of the deacons. Everybody can minister in this way. So before Serena comes, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this special day in which we honor our mothers. Uh, Father, some of our mothers have gone on from here, but we re remember them today. And some of our mothers are still with us. Uh, we pray that we can celebrate with them, whether it's in person or doing something special for them. We just pray, Lord God, that you would indeed um, remind us 
of the goodness that we've been given through our mothers. And Father, we do pray for those who are alone. We pray for those who are shut in, those who are isolated, those who are quarantined at this time. Even from amongst us, we pray for our seniors. Father, would you be with them in a special way? Would you help them? And Father, would you help us to be your hands and feet and uh, givers of love to them in this time? Father, we are just so grateful that you've done so much for us. Please help us uh, to uh, be a friend to those who right now need someone to come alongside. And Father, as Serena comes and speaks this morning, I just pray that you would bless her words, help that we would uh, learn from you more about uh, spiritual disciplines uh, and specifically the discipline of study. And we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Serena, come. Good morning, Trinity family, and praise the Lord. I greet you with the grace and peace of um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Over the past three weeks, we have been studying about the spiritual disciplines, and Pastor Jake has led us on the spiritual discipline of prayer, fasting, and celebrating the Sabbath. This morning, we're going to be continuing in the same vein, and we're going to be looking at the study, the discipline of study, studying the Bible. Let's pause for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that you have given us your word. And Lord, we pray that you teach us how to study your word, how to understand your word, and to discipline ourselves into making time, setting time apart to read your word and to study your word. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The case can be made that people who do not study God's word to have God reveal himself to them, to have God reveal his will to them, oftentimes end up leading a cult or being in a cult. The story is made true when we speak of a cult leader, Jim Jones, who led a group of people onto an island called Guyana. It is on this island, this cult leader, Somehow, based on his ideologies of what the end of times look like, encourage these people to commit suicide by drinking a cyanide-flavored drink. The death of all these people included the death of over 300 children. Jim Jones himself died by suicide by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We are living in difficult times. We are living through a present pandemic and people are seeking a word. People are seeking a word of encouragement, a word of hope. People desperately need to know what is happening. We also live in times where young people are leaving the church for a more liberal form of community. People want to hear a word that, that makes them happy and, and feel good. Uh, um, people oftentimes want to hear a word that does not restrict them in any way, but a word that, that, that helps them to live a life that they want to live. And so when we talk about the discipline of studying God's word, it becomes extremely important because we want God to reveal himself to us. And one of the ways in which God does this is through his word. And I know that you and I today living in difficult times, we are desperate for a word. We have so many people who have their own ideas and version as to what exactly is happening today. There are people who believe that this is end time, end time scenarios being played out. There are people who believe that because we are so wicked that God is punishing us. And if we really take time to study God's word for ourselves, it's important that each of us pick up the word of God, read God's word, take time out to study God's word, then we will have a better understanding of what God is saying and not be led astray. Our text this morning is going to be coming from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to be looking at verse 15. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Work hard so God can approve you. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. If I had to pick a topic for, for the sermon this morning, it will be this. Study your Bible. You will be a better Christian. There are three reasons coming from this text that alert us to the fact that we do need to study God's word and that gives us the reason as to why we ought to be studying God's word. And the first is this. When we study God's word, God applauds us and God approves of us. We are not studying God's word to look the approval of man. It is so easy, especially today, to have people approve us and people applaud us because we, we like attention and we like that kind of affirmation and it is important but we must be so cognizant of the fact that God's approval is most important and most vital and when we study God's word he approves and he applauds of us we give applause to our children families and friends when they study hard and excel and so we too ought to have that same discipline that we must be studying God's word because God approves of this type of discipline studying God's word allows us to embody the truth God's truth it, it is not for for man to approve of us or to applaud us when we study God's word, but embodying God's truth. Help us to walk in the image that we are in create that we are created in, God's image. And it helps us to live out the likeness and the character of who our God is. So that's important. Studying God's word it is also an act of, of self-care. We we take care of our bodies by exercising, we eat right, we rest but it is also extremely important that we study God's word to feed and nourish our soul. That is important. Studying God's word is an act of self-discipline and we must have that discipline where we set apart a time and a place and we pick up God's word and we sit down in the presence of God, in the power of God, with the help of God and we study his word. Number two, we, we need to study God's word because we, it helps us to walk blameless and to be unapologetic when we speak and teach God's truth coming from God's word. There is absolutely no shame, no shame whatsoever in preaching the gospel. And people lots of time try to shut us down and shut us up because they don't want to hear the truth of God's word for, for various reasons. But never allow anyone to make you ashamed of the gospel or to make you feel ashamed of knowing and to living out God's truth. Um, there is also no shame in enduring suffering. Studying the word of God tells us that in this life we will endure hardship, we will endure trials and tribulation, we will have struggle, we will have difficulty. And oft, lots of time people would say to us that we are sick or that we are going through difficult times because you know, God is punishing us or we are not, we are not true Christians. But that is not true because the word of God tells us that in this life we will face difficulty and we will face persecution. But knowing God's truth and studying God's words reminds us that there is no shame and that we must walk blameless. Likewise, when we study God's word, we, we also walk blameless in that the life that we live agrees with the truth of God's word that we preach, that we teach, and that we study. And so if it is that we are people of God, children of God, who are studying God's word, then the life that we live must be in line with the word that we are studying and the truth that we get from God's word. So no shame whatsoever. And then the third reason is that when we rightly divide God's truth, we conquer souls for Jesus. The word of God, the truth of God's word as a sword 
cuts through and strikes the conscience and it slays sin and leads sinners to repentance. That is what Jesus came to teach and to preach the word of God. He came to, to call sinners to, to repent of their sins. When we, when we study God's word, sin is striped out in our heart. It, it cleanses us and it makes us free and whole. And not only does it do this for ourselves, but as we minister and share the gospel to others, we, we, we teach them the truth that only God can save. And so if anybody were to come to us and say that they can save, that is not true because salvation is of God and God alone. Um, when, we, when we use the word of God to slay sin, we must be very careful that we are not slaying people. Like using the word of God as a sword, cutting up people and committing, condemning people to hell, referring to people as abomination. That, that is not the truth of God's word because the truth of God's word is that yes, we are sinners and yes, we do the wrong thing, but God is so full of grace and full of mercy and there is forgiveness, there is hope, there is salvation. So when we study God's word and we conquer souls for Jesus and we slay sin, I, I implore you to don't spend your life living in guilt and shame and do not cause others to live a life living in guilt and shame because the God's word, the truth of God's word is full of grace and mercy and forgiveness. And so those are the reasons why it's important for us to study God's word. And now you may ask the question, well, how do we study God's word? And there is an answer for that as well. There is a reason and a need to study God's word. Let's take a look at 2 Peter Second Peter chapter 3, and we're going to be reading verse 15 and 16. Emphasis is really on verse 16, but we'll begin in verse 15. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 14 and 16. And remember, the Lord is waiting that people have time to be saved. This is just as our beloved brother Paul wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters around to mean something quite different from what he meant, just as they do to other parts of scripture. And the result is disaster from them. And we know this to be true. We know of people who have taken Bible out of context. We know of people who have taken the word of God and used it to oppress people, to condemn people to hell, to hurt people, to be cruel and mean to people. And Peter is saying to us that some things in scripture are hard to understand. And we have no right to take scripture and to twist it for our own purpose because God's word is clear. It will bring the disaster upon us. And so it is important that as we study God's word, we seek God's wisdom and we, we really ask the Holy Spirit to give us the discernment that we need to understand exactly what the word of God is saying. And so to answer the question of how, how to study the word of God, the first way is what is referred to as communal reading. And Peter makes this, uh, this point very clear for us in that we need a community of believers when we are studying God's word. Communal reading. Studying God's word in community. We cannot study in isolation. We will not fully understand the word of God when we are isolated. And that is how cults are formed. That is how occultist leaders arise. And that is how we people are led astray into a doctrine and an ideology that is not the true word of God. Studying in a community helps us to hear the voice of other believers. It helps us to hear the reason of other believers, the interpretation of other believers. And so 
when we do that we can better understand the Word of God and we can prevent distortion of a text so reading in community is an important way of studying God's Word we can also take a course in in studying God's Word whether we want to go to a Bible school or whether we want to do an online course like Bible schools um, Universities are not just for people who want to be pastors or preachers, but for people who, do, who want to, to have a better understanding of God's Word. We also study God's Word by using supplemental, supplemental books, like use a commentary and books by other theologians or other pastors who, who write books and listen and read to their interpretation of some of scripture passages. And that is a good way to, to study the Bible as well. If you also want to study the Bible, you can start with smaller books of the Bible. The Psalms are an easy read. They are, they're quite relatable to our experiences in, in this day and age. The book of James is a, is a powerful book, a powerful book. For any one of us to read and to get wisdom from God and how to endure suffering. The book of Galatians about our freedom in Christ. These are smaller books that, that are easy for us to begin with to, to study the Word of God. So um, those are some some areas in, in which we, we can better learn how to study the Word of God. Next we have close reading. And close reading is something that I like to do. I like to really look at the text, break the text, break the text apart, look at the, the details of the text and, and what the text is, is really saying. Now, when we do close readings, there are a number of things that factor in that we, we must be, be aware of as we do close reading. But today we're going to look at three of them. And the first one is tradition. Tradition, you know, the thing that has been passed down to us from generation and the thing that we ourselves are passing down to our children. Traditions shape our, our worldview. They inform the choices and decisions that we make. And they also inform the assumptions that we bring to a text. And when we look at the tradition that we bring into, that we ought not to when we are, re, when we are studying the Bible, we must be aware that the, the type of tradition that we bring, some of which are incorrect, they can be harmful to a, a group of people and they can also privilege a group of people and there are implications as to how people see God and see Christians and even see the Bible. One example is, um, uh, which is true for me, is that I, I always grew up hearing cleanliness is next to godliness. That is not in the Bible. Um, people believe these days that the, the role of a woman is in the house, that women belong in the house is something that has been passed down in traditions. And so, so many people believe that, that a woman should not be being educated um, educating herself um, and working but that her role should be in the house cooking food and looking after the children that is tradition and and we read that we bring that into scripture and we try to make it doctrine and force it upon other women who might not want this to be their life and that is tradition tradition is dangerous um, you also have people who bring like the emotions to a text so you also time hear people they they grow up without a father or an abusive father, and um, there are people who would say God is not my father because they they can't relate God being a heavenly father because they have these issues with an earthly father. And if you bring those emotions into a text, then you would never be able to understand a text properly. And this one for me is personal in that. Um, the Apostle Paul, he, he writes about a slave being obedient to his master. And, and that is a passage that, that I have always rejected. No, that is not the true meaning of the text in any way. But I, you know, we are so guilty sometimes, me included, of bringing culture 
um, emotions and past and traditions and our worldviews into a text that we must be so cautious about doing that women who were sexually abused if you were to bring the lot passage where lot offered his daughters to a group of men they would reject this because that, that is not in that, that's not something that's not a god who they want to even know about especially lot being included in the great men of faith in the Hebrew passage. So if we bring these kinds of traditions and emotions and cultures and worldview into a biblical text when we are studying it, we are off to a bad start and we won't be able to embrace the truth of scripture. And then we have the biblical text. The biblical studying the biblical text is studying what scripture actually says not what we want scripture to say. And so when we are studying a biblical text, we must cleanse our minds, open up our hearts, come humbly to God in the text, come with the help of God and the presence of God. And to really understand what the text is saying to us, we can oftentimes just close our eyes and allow someone to, to read to us while we listen. Or if we have the, the word of God on, on tape, we can listen to that being read to us or we can even read it aloud and storytelling is is something that i that i really like because it, it opens up your imagination and you get to really picture you can picture the stories in the bible and the text and you could um try and experience what was happening and to it gives you, you know, a clear idea and a clear picture as to what the text is speaking about um, an example of, of not bringing assumptions to a biblical text is where the Bible speaks about um, blessed are those who mourn for they should be comforted. And we oftentimes use that text to encourage people who, who are mourning the loss of loved one. And nothing is wrong with that. But the true meaning of the text when in the context of Jesus preaching that on the Sermon on the Mount is that what he meant was blessed are those who mourn over their sinful state. So when we commit sin, it, it breaks our hearts and we mourn over it. And he's saying to us, blessed are, blessed are you who mourn over your sins because you will be comforted. The Holy Spirit will come and comfort you and cleanse you and heal you. Um, we also have Bible passages that speak about when when someone is sick, call the elders to come and lay hands on them and pray for them. And, and we can't bring, we must let that text stand for what it believes because there are people who when they have gotten sick, they refuse to seek medical attention, but they call for their pastors and, and the prophets and priestesses in their church to, to lay hands on them and to pray over them without seeking medical attention. And that is an improper way of reading the text. So a biblical text must be read in the context of which the text is written and not by what we want the text to say to us. The last one is what is referred to as translation choice. Translation affects the interpretation of the text. And there are so many um, Bibles being translated lately. I do support and approve of reading different translations of the Bible. I myself have lots of different types of translation. It, it, it helps us to give... Um, a better understanding of the word of the text and, and what the text is really saying. The danger in is that we, we must know who's translating this text and, and for whom it was translated. Uh, an example would be the Jehovah's Witnesses because their translation is meant for them, their beliefs and their doctrine, their ideologies. So if you were to read our Bible, John 1, 1, where it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And look at their translation. This is what you're going to see. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was a God. One little, one little letter, one little word has changed the dynamics of an entire translation. 
and it is not correct and so when we look at chat translation choice be very careful about the translation that you are reading from it's important translation can be treason the Bible was originally written in Hebrew Greek and Aramaic and so the translation that we have today have been translated and so because words can have more than one meaning it is possible that that a Bible has been translated outside of the original meaning of the text so be be careful about the translation of the Bible that you are reading and so we find today that the discipline of studying the Bible has benefits and blessings it feeds our soul Studying the Bible is a tool for us to distinguish the voice of God and the will of God. We need to know that we are hearing from God and not from the evil one. We need to be able to discern the will of God. The Bible's agenda is to feed and to nourish our souls, and we need that, especially in these times. The Bible's agenda is to strengthen us, and oftentimes, we can feel so weak and so discouraged, but when we pick up the word of God, we, we have strength. The Bible gives us hope. The Bible teaches us to discern truth. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is divine, that Jesus is God. And most importantly, the Bible teaches us when we study it that God's word is true. God's word is true, and God's word is true for every aspect of our life. Every decision we need to make our life for our lives, um, the way we are to live our life and, and work and how we treat the earth and how we treat people is found in the word of God. The word of God is true. Jesus said to us in John chapter 8, verse 32, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so if you and I want to be free today, if you and I want that truth, God's truth to set us free, God's truth to applaud us and approve of us, God's truth to help us to walk blameless and unapologetic, God's truth to help us to divide his word correctly and to conquer soul for his kingdom, then we really ought to be spending time, setting time apart, to study the Word of God. It is vitally important, especially in the times in which we are living today. The discipline of study. Study the Word of God. You will be a better Christian. Guaranteed. And so Trinity, as you go through this week, I pray that you will really take time to study God's word and to, to hear from God. We, we really need to, to hear what God's word is saying to us, especially in this time. And so if I may just bless you, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless each and every one of you. Break every chain, break every chain, break every